Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Reacting to Scary Animations, and we share each other's stories. I tell you guys my stories, you guys tell me your stories, and we all just have a good time. So everybody get comfortable, because we're going to check out some videos in today's episode. If you guys are cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. The first video comes from a channel called Mort. I will put the link to their channel in the description box below. Show them some support, because I love the animation style that they have. I saw the thumbnails, and I was just like, ooh. You know, sometimes you just go, ooh. So go check them out in the description box below. But this first video is called Creepiest McDonald's Horror Story Animated. So let's get it. It was about three in the morning and I was on my way to my job at my local McDonald's to open with one of my favorite managers there with me. Ronald she McDonald? told me to text her when oh. I got there so that she could let me inside. Once I pulled in, I noticed a man standing outside of his car in the farthest corner of the parking lot. That's not a man. That's a straight up demon. Get your facts straight. He was shooting me this sort of menacing stare. Let me point out that it's completely pouring outside. I was really confused as to why this guy wasn't just sitting in his car. Who's dead? I then parked and texted my manager to let me inside. Seconds later, I noticed her at the door opening it for me. Upon walking up to her, I say my usual good morning. I was stopped mid-sentence by her rushing me inside and saying, Did you see that guy outside? No shit! Come on, we all have eyeballs here. Some can see better than others. I'm pretty sure that this goofball saw that man standing outside. I told her yes, and she proceeded to help me refill sauces, napkins, and things like that. My manager then told me that she's going to check the security tapes just to make sure that everything during the period that the restaurant was closed was okay. M minutes later, my manager called me into her office for whatever reason. She told me to look at the screen and it showed that the same man was standing outside. The time was 1247. She then fast forwarded the tape to reveal that the man had been standing outside the entire time up until now. And at this point it's about 3.50 AM. I ran to the front lobby and I noticed him still standing over by his car. I figured or was hoping that he was probably just on something and he was waiting for us to open so that maybe he could get breakfast. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I resumed maybe filling hungry. sauces on, again now. and making you sure everything was McDonald's. in working order. Until I was abruptly interrupted by banging at the front door. I walked over and noticed a figure right outside He's the front like, door. Me chicken it was the man. I yelled that we were closed and that he would have to come back later. That didn't seem to phase him as he continued to bang on the door. No! I walked away, figuring that he was just being an asshole when suddenly I heard a loud crash. I ran to the lobby the to see the glass door broken and the man beginning to step inside. My I yelled for my manager and told her that ASAP! we needed to leave through the back door. And we did just that. We booked it to our cars and both called the cops. They arrived in about 15 minutes and came outside the restaurant with a dirty looking man in cuffs. Oh, he's dirty and nasty. They said he was hiding in the back janitor's closet with a large knife in his hand. So that's my story, and also the reason I'm never working early mornings again. Oh, you're gonna let your favorite manager work there by yourself? Way to be a man, my guy. Next video of today's episode is called Scariest Home Alone Story Animated. And not everybody can be Macaulay Culkin with the traps. Some of us don't know what to do if like burglars or robbers or anybody comes over. So we're gonna see how this family fended for themselves. Years ago when I was in second grade, I'm 22 now. My parents one morning finally felt confident in allowing me to stay home from school by myself then stay home without a babysitter until they came home. Oh, my bad, big guy. That morning, my father gave me a house key, showed me the emergency numbers in the yellow book, and gave me instructions on what to do if stupid things happen like the house catching on fire. Yeah, okay. After school that day, I came home, put the key in the door, and walked into my house. Ha, <laughs> yeah! Now I can call some girls over! Oh, wait, I don't know any girls. I felt free, and I felt privileged that I was finally a big boy, and that I could now be on my own at home. Needless to say... I kind of got caught up in the moment and ate tons of ice cream while watching Terminator on VHS since my <laughs> parents would never let us watch anything other than PG-13. Okay. Around 5 that day, I heard the doorbell ring. My dad told me to never answer the door by myself, even if they were home. I walked to our family room where I could get a good view of who was out there. Maybe my dad was just getting a package or something. No. He did always enjoy ordering things online. <gasps> Who the hell? I saw a middle-aged man standing in a dark blue jacket that I've never seen before. He rang the doorbell again, and I expected him to leave after no one answered. After a third ring, I saw him walk down the steps and I assumed he was leaving. 
I went back to watching Terminator. This man loves when his I ice cream and Terminator. Outside my kitchen window. The man was in our backyard for some odd reason. What? I felt scared for my life since some stranger was on my property. I ran under the kitchen table and grabbed the cordless phone from the counter and proceeded to call my dad's work number. My dad answered, and I exclaimed how a strange man was in the backyard and was now proceeding to try and open the sliding door. My dad told me to stay where I was and to call the neighbors. He would call 911. I told my dad I loved him, and he said he would call me immediately after he called 911. Oh shit, damn. You guys heard that? He said that he told his dad he loved him, and his dad didn't say it back. Before I could call my neighbor, the man was able to somehow open our family room window. I feared for my that. life, and ran to the bathroom and locked the door and called our neighbors. After 30 seconds, I hear my neighbor running through our house, shouting my name to see if I was okay. Wait, does the neighbor have a key? How the hell did she just appear in there? She said that she saw no one in the house. And we stayed in the bathroom until the police arrived. I don't think he's mad at that. You know what I'm saying, guys? The police conducted their investigation and told us that they found some fingerprints that matched a recently released convict who was previously in jail for breaking into homes. After that day, my parents did not leave me alone without a babysitter until I went to high school. I thought he was going to say, like, he still had a babysitter until he was, like, 22 or something. Next video of today's episode is called I Watched a Woman's... <laughs> on deep web and you guys know the uh, 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 you guys know what that means right i mean i don't think that i can say it because <laughs> this story happens to me on the deep web okay the deep web is basically the hidden internet that contains dark content all right we know what that is what are you our teacher come on torture. get on with it none of that really interests me me neither the only reason why i was on the deep web was to look for government secrets and stuff like that. After looking for links that had to do with that type of stuff, I eventually got bored and decided to find other things on the deep web. I don't know what it is. I really like I had his a art VPN style. On, so if I ever came across something illegal, I wouldn't get caught. I then came across a link that led me to his site. It was called the Devil's Chamber. It gave a description of the website. Basically, it was a snuff film, aka torture and murder films. There was a black video box with a play button. I was very curious and clicked on the play button. A black screen popped up with a timer and a live chat box with people waiting for something. Mm. The timer said three minutes till showtime. I got curious and typed in the chat what everyone was waiting for. <laughs> what are we doing here, they guys? Said, a murder live stream. Ooh. I didn't like this and I put my cursor over the X. But as soon as I was gonna click out, text appeared on the black screen that said <laughs> it's showtime. Like, hey, maybe I'll stick around, just for you know, and 20 seconds. To see what was going to happen. Just then a screen appeared with a woman tied to a chair in a dimly lit room with a door. <laughs> then someone with a mask appeared on screen as well. The person in the mask stared at the camera and said, It's time for pain. <laughs> he then opened the door and closed it behind him. It's time for pain? Corny ass. A few seconds later, he came out with a dog tied to a chain. The dog was barking like crazy in a really aggressive way. Hello? PETA? The pit bull lunged at the woman, attacking her while still she was screaming in pain as How the did you train the dog to do that? Heart. A few minutes later, she stopped screaming and she was dead. The person in the mask then walked out that of the room said, with Fetch. the dog, leaving the woman whose flesh was literally torn apart. I bet he got a treat after that. I closed out immediately and deleted the Tor browser. I will never, and I repeat, never go back on the deep web again. Alright, you know what? I rarely do this, but let's see what the comments said about this particular video. This guy said the dog is a paid actor. <laughs> Breathe if you think this never happened. <laughs> okay, before we go to the next animation, guys, look at my hair. What is that? I am on my senior woofers today. I am senior woofer, senior woofers. Next video is called Sexy Guy from Facebook turned out to be psycho. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those sexy ones. Sometimes they're crazy. This story is from a female's point of view. When I was in college, I worked in an Applebee's to make ends meet. 
All right, you know what? The fact that he said this is from a female's point of view, and I've heard this guy's voice before. Like, why do they always give this man the deepest voice doing the girl stories? Like, come on, man. I worked there from freshman year to senior year, so I had some regular customers. I had one that tipped me the most, and his name was Larry. Hey, and Larry, one day, my guy. While at work, I received a friend request on Facebook from a guy that was really attractive. He was sexy, huh? I checked this page out before. Oh my I god, he ain't even it. that sexy though. And it seemed legit. And he was in my city. As soon as I accepted it, he messaged me and said, Hey, thanks for accepting my request. Uh -huh. That was usually code for creep when someone does that. But he was cute. I said, No problem. And we continued to converse. Yeah, sometimes if somebody's cute, you kind of let like the weird thing slide at first. Like, if they say hey in a creepy way, but they're cute, you're like, oh, you're so cute. But if a creepy guy said hey, you'd be like, get back! Eventually, after a few days chatting, we decided to go on a date. I decided to meet at Chili's on a Friday at 6 p.m. because I don't know this guy. And maybe he's crazy. Yeah, maybe he's crazy. I arrived at the restaurant before him. And I messaged him to let him know that our table is under my name. And he said, okay. After about 20 minutes... I messaged him back, but he didn't reply until 20 minutes later telling me that he wasn't going to make it. I was pissed, but I ordered and ate my food. I left and I drove home. When I got to my apartment, I walked up the stairs to get to my apartment and I hear something behind me. I get to my door, turn to my left, and I see a man standing at the bottom of the stairs looking at me. Was he cute? I look closer and I see that it's... Larry, my customer at work. Oh, Larry. I frantically asked him, what is he doing here? And he told me it's okay. Always make sure you make it home safe. What the fuck? Larry, calm down, man. You're coming on too strong. Then he said, sorry, I couldn't make it to the date. I said, what? What? I tried unlocking my door, but I dropped my oh, keys. Oh, it was like a catfish situation. The stairs yelling, it's not oh what you think. Oh my God. I grabbed the keys, oh. unlocked the door. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. My door behind me. He started banging on my door. Lock the damn door. He was my best customer, and he deserved me. Oh I the cops my goodness! And they caught him outside in my car, just sitting there calmly. After that, I deleted all of my social media Ugh. and dating apps. Then I quit my job at Applebee's. Ever since that experience. I'm very paranoid of people's intentions. Yeah. And I always carry a pistol. Damn. She basically said, I got the strap, baby. Do, 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 do. Next video of today's episode is called, I thought he was only my imaginary friend. Like, real talk, guys, I've never had an imaginary friend. I do talk to myself sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I just start talking to myself, and then I start having conversations with myself. So maybe I'm my own imaginary friend. I'm just starting to confuse myself. Like, maybe I'm my own friend? Like, maybe I'm my own best friend? You know what? Just forget what I said. Have you guys ever had an imaginary friend? If you have, let me know down below in the comments below. But we're about to check out this guy's imaginary friend. And he said he thought he was only my imaginary friend. So let's see what he actually was. When I was just a little boy, I had an imaginary friend. Well... At least I thought he was an imaginary friend. Okay, so he was actually a real friend? Like, he was actually a real person in the room with you? Like, what is happening? Today, I'm not so sure. Today, I'm not so I sure. I would see him from time to time around my house. He was a man, and he lurked in the shadows. He was completely black from head to toe, and his skin was charred and pockmarked, like a burnt match. I couldn't make out his face or any other features. All I could see were his red eyes. He had the most terrifying red eyes I've ever seen. And even now, when I think of them, it gives me the chills. Gave you the heebie -jeebies. He appeared at random and without any warning. I would be playing with my toys and all of a sudden he would be there. Okay, this is actually kind of He kinda never creepy. made a sound. He never said a word. He never did anything except stand there staring at me and smiling. Then he would vanish as quietly as as suddenly as he had come. As time went by, I got accustomed to his presence. It That's got to cool, the I point guess. where he would just appear and I would just <laughs> glance at him. Then go back to playing with my toys. 
I don't like that. I at could all. always feel his eyes as he was just standing ever so close and ever so far away How could at the you same call that time. An imaginary friend? My family knew That's about terrifying. him. terrifying. But they never saw him themselves. My mother and father thought it was cute that I had an imaginary friend, but That's when I cute. described him to them, That's cute. they got a little creeped out. That's cute. My sister was the only one who believed me. She's the only one who believed he was real, and she said it scared her. One time, I had just finished going to the bathroom, and I started washing my hands. I was standing on a little stool so I could reach the sink. <gasps> All of a sudden, I saw the man out of the corner of my eye. <gasps> he was walking up the stairs. Oh, that I is called so my scary. sister and told her the man this was is here. This freaking me out. She came running over, but just when I was about to point out the man, he walked backwards down the stairs until he was out of sight. When she this left, freaking me out. he came creeping back up the stairs. Oh, this guy's I gave a wise up trying guy. to show him the people because he clearly did not want to be seen. Eventually, my parents moved out the house. I remember seeing the man with the red eyes watching us as oh. we were moving and the van pulled away. He didn't follow us and I didn't see him again after that. Okay, so then the house I was haunted. I dismissed him as a figment of my childish imagination. Years passed and I forgot about him. Then, one night, when I was 16 years old, I was walking upstairs to my bedroom. It was after midnight. As I was walking down the hallway, something emerged from one of the other bedrooms. Bro. It stepped Bro, out into the I light and like I realized, this. to my horror, it. that it was the man with red eyes. I stopped in my tracks and I froze. No. My heart was in my throat. Yeah. He just Your stood there staring at me. The red eyes burned bright and he flashed me a malicious smile. Then still staring at me, he slowly walked across the hallway into my bedroom. Fuck. If this was a movie, perhaps I would have chased him down and forced him to tell me who or what he was. Why didn't you, pussy? Perhaps it would have ended in me fighting to the death, but this wasn't a movie. It was real life and I did neither of those things. I simply turned around, ran back down the stairs, and fled from my house. I sat on a curb outside, shivering and shaking until dawn arrived. Wow. I haven't seen him again since then. Damn. That was really good. Last video of today's episode is called My Boyfriend's Dad Locked Me in the Basement. And can we give a round of applause to Mort, the creator of these animations? Because these are beautiful. Like, these are putting me right in the mood. And not that way, you sick perverts. But let's check out the last video. My Boyfriend's Dad Locked Me in the Basement. We gotta know why. This story happened about three years ago. When I was 16, I had my first boyfriend, Ben, who just so happened to be my next door neighbor. For the first few months of dating, we were going fine. Up until I had dinner at Ben's house one evening. His dad, Graham, gave me the creeps. Wait, that's the dad? Big man boob guy? Alright, I mean, he definitely looks like he locks people in the basement. From the first moment I ever met him, he was creepy to me. He shook my hand tightly and had a big grin on his face with his big bulging eyes. At the dinner, I swear Graham never took his eyes off of me at all. Every now and then... I would glance over to see if he was still staring at me, Ooh. and of course he was. Have you ever heard of a From toothbrush? Then on, I spent more time around Ben's house. We would watch movies in his room, play video games, or just study homework. Whenever I was at Ben's house, his dad would always be lingering around. Like he would always burst into the bedroom. My man, can you get a shirt in your size? Things like, how is like, Stop walking around where? like that. You're embarrassing me, you dad. Me. Basically an excuse to come in. It's like he wanted to catch us doing something, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and whenever I would go to the bathroom, of course, he would try and come in, even though the door was locked. What the heck? He would knock and say, oh, I didn't realize someone was in the bathroom. This creepy stuff went on for a while, maybe about two months, but there was this one incident that really scared me. Ben asked if I can go to the basement and grab a couple of pops. I went down there and looked around in the fridge to see what drinks they had. Then I heard the door close. It was the basement door. Don't tell me he's in there too. Came down the steps. He asked me what I was doing down there and I told him I was just grabbing some pop for myself and Ben. I smiled and walked past him and headed up the stairs. He's like, you want pop? I'm pop. I tried to open the basement door, but it was locked. His dad locked it behind him. I turned around and said, uh, sir, could you help? The door is stuck. 
He didn't reply. I went back downstairs and I saw his dad with his top off what? throwing a can of Sprite on his body saying, it's a hot day, isn't it? I was extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. And I asked once more, could you open the door because it seems to be stuck? I didn't say lock because I didn't want him to know I was uncomfortable. Is he putting deodorant on? He said to me, here's the key and place it on a small table next to him. Mm. And then he said, come and get it. Oh! While smiling with his tongue rubbing against his teeth. Oh, he was doing that. I let out a nervous, yeah, awkward yeah, laugh yeah, as yeah, yeah. I oh. thought he was joking. He wasn't. I crouched down to grab the key. But just as I did, I could feel his face near mine. And he was smelling my hair. <sighs> I could He's like hear herbal essence. really close breathing in through his nose. As soon as I got the key, I sped, walked up the stairs to open the basement door. Hurry up, please. I just left at that point. Okay. And I went home and cried in my bedroom. I never told anyone this story, and I broke up with Ben shortly after this incident. We lived there for two more years after that, until we moved away. Every now and then, I would see his dad in his garden or something, and he would always give me that same creepy smile like he did in the basement. That's the first time I've ever seen a dad cock block his own son. Wow. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of me reacting to scary animations. Go and check out Mort's full library of videos. Link will be in the description box below. If you guys want me to continue this series, recommend me some animation channels in the comment section down below. But if you all enjoyed this video, make sure you give it one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.